God isn't looking for men to be monuments. He's looking for men to be restorers. Uh, that's a, a recent movie called The Monuments Men. It's a very good movie. And it's a, a story about uh, how a dictator uh, wanted to steal the riches of every culture that he overcame. But not only that, he wanted to destroy the history of the people so that when, they, when he overtook them and overcame them, they would have nothing to go back to. They would have nothing that uh, brought remembrance and, and things like that. So it's everywhere I've been where there's been a dictator. I've just got back from Uganda just over a month ago uh, when Idi Amin uh, started on his rampage what he did was he killed all the academics, he killed all the doctors, he killed the teachers, he burned the books, he burned the Bibles. You see, when the enemy gets into a life of a dictator, he wants to kill and destroy. That sounds like John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy, but he wants to stop and, and change the culture uh, of specifically kingdom culture, and he wants to change the culture that we enjoy as a Christian nation and take that away through a thing called secular humanism. You say, what is secular humanism? Well, it's something that has uh, been uh, done in our classrooms at school every day. Uh, they, they have secular human, human, humanist teachers. Uh, not all teachers are secular humanists, of course. Isn't that right? So we've got some teachers here that don't subscribe to that, but others do because the, of the way that the universities are training them. Uh, and listen to what some of these quotations, I use these in Sunday, but I'm using them again tonight. Uh, <clears throat> this is from Charles F. Potter. He, he says, secular humanism is an attempt to function as a civilized society with the exclusion of God and his moral principles. During the last several decades, humanists have been very successful in propagating their beliefs. Their primary approach is to target the youth through the public school system. Charles Potter says, education is thus a most powerful ally of humanism. And every school is a school of humanism. What can a theistic Sunday school's meeting for an hour once a week and teaching only a fraction of children do to stem the tide of a five-day program of humanistic teaching? Many of us sit here today and we don't even think about that sort of thing going on in our schools or going on in our nation. John Dunphy says uh, in his award-winning essay, the battle for humankind's future must be waged and won in the public school classroom by teachers who correctly perceive their role as the proselytizers of a new faith, a religion of humanity, utilizing a classroom instead of a pulpit to carry humanist values into wherever they teach. The classroom must and will become an arena of conflict between the old and the new, the rotting corpse of Christianity, together with its adjacent evils and misery and the new faith of humanism. There's two planks, they call it, for humanism. Number one, the humanist manifesto state that religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. And the second one is humanism believes that man is part of nature and that he has emerged as a result, uh, a result of continuous process. On the grounds that creation is religious, so 
people have uh, then brought in evolution as the way that man is, and then ma because of evolution, man's, whatever man does is right in their eyes. To finish with that, uh, the, theory, the theory of evolution is contrary to established science. George Wald, a prominent evolutionist, a Harvard, a Harvard University biochemist and Nobel laureate wrote, when it comes to the origin of life, there are only two possibilities, creation or spontaneous generation. There is no third way. Spontaneous generation was disproved 100 years ago, but that leads us to only one other conclusion, that of supernatural creation, which we cannot accept that, we cannot accept that on philosophical grounds, therefore we choose to believe the impossible, we choose to believe the lie that life arose spontaneously by chance. We are fighting for our culture. We are, God is uh, not looking for men as monuments, he's looking for men who will be restorers. Uh, they will restore uh, us back to the place where we used to be. And, and the book of Nehemiah, <clears throat> Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king. And uh, Nehemiah was told by messengers what was happening in his home and uh, Jerusalem. And Nehemiah wept over the people. He wept, fasted, and prayed for the people because he knew what the culture of God was. He knew why that city of Jerusalem was established. He knew that the, the walls meant salvation and the gates were, meant praise. He knew that that, was, that city was symbolic of salvation and symbolic of praise. And, and the enemy wanted that city and the city walls and the gates to be kept down because salvation and praise would no longer be in that place. The enemy wants our children and our grandchildren not to know what salvation is and not to know what praise is. I thank God that uh, my, my grandsons are all here this morning, tonight. My three grandsons are here. There's Caleb, stand up. There's Joshua and there's Nathan. Stand up, boys. Uh, that, these are my grandsons. Amen. Sit down. Thank you very much. See how obedient they are? Very, very good. And uh, my, my, my sons are here. Just stand up and sit down. Thank you very much. And my son-in-law, uh, my spiritual sons. and uh, So these are uh, what we are fighting for. They're, they're here tonight leading us in worship. Why? Not by accident, but because God showed me what salvation meant, and then we then followed the plan of salvation. Amen? We are not going to let the enemy steal, kill, and destroy in the things that we have. The, you heard them say there, uh, that, and you saw that this is a true, st that the movie's based on facts, Okay? That movie is based on truths. There is some, uh, uh, li li uh, what do you call it, Hollywood license there. But the movie is based on uh, truths. The, there were actually those uh, artists and architects brought from 13 different countries together to go and save. And, and you, you, you already saw some of those Picassos, priceless Picassos and uh, 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 paintings like that were burned up because Hitler didn't want anyone to have them. If he couldn't have them, no one was going to have them. Uh, do you see how the enemy works? He's going to make sure that uh, he's going to have your children and your children's children if we don't do what uh, Winston Churchill says, what the Bible says, if you'll not fight for the right when you can win without bloodshed. We can, we can win without bloodshed. We can win the battle through the wisdom of the Lord. Listen to what 
the, the, the Word of God says in Proverbs 24, 3, it says, through skillful and godly wisdom, this is it from the Amplified Bible, uh, is a house, a life, a home, a family built, and by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation. Verse 4 says, And by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man, verse 5, a, a wise man is strong and is better than a strong man. And a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. You see, God gave us wisdom. And when we uh, apply that wisdom to our lives, that makes us stronger than the strong man. You see, the strong man cannot steal your goods if you're stronger than he is. Isn't that right? And we, we can make ourselves stronger by doing what the Word of God says, by getting, filling our chambers with His knowledge. Amen. The knowledge of the Word. His Word is life. His Word is life to those that find it. His Word is spirit. His spirit and life is His Word. And when we speak His Word, we release creative power into the atmosphere. That's how we are going to win the battle. We are going to win the battle by saying, no, no. no that's not going to happen. Not in my lifetime. Not in my watch. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in my family. It's not, you see there, uh, by wisdom, a house, a life, a home, a family. You see, we have treasures in life. The, 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 the main treasures we have is our family. One of the main treasures we have is our family, and it's one of the main areas that the enemy uh, comes against us to steal, is our family. And we've got to be careful with that. The other treasure we have is the Word of God. You see, if, if you rightfully handle the Word of God or rightfully divide the Word of God, you will never be a down person. You will never be broke. You will never be uh, filled with sorrow. You'll be filled with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost because you know in your default setting is the Word. It just comes immediately when you get into trouble. The Word, the Word shoots out and the Word stops the attack and the advance of the enemy in your life. There's nothing else that's going to stop it, guys. Amen. The, the enemy is, is, is on, uh, has purpose. You see, I just read to you about the secular humanists who have been over a hundred years pre-planning uh, their purpose to, to bring humanism. And you know, there's more, uh, we as ministers know this, is there's more humanistic funerals and humanistic marriages now than there is Christian marriages and Christian funerals. What a shock. That is a major shock. And, and it's because good men are doing nothing. I tell you what, uh, the, the, there's things happened in, in society recently in, in Scotland with laws changing, and uh, we, we're going to have a named person look after our child who's going to watch over our child's uh, uh, welfare. Uh, you don't even know who that named person's going to be. You don't know what that person's character. That person could be a secular humanist. And there's a sign to your family. Come on, give me a Pentecostal break here, somebody. Uh, somebody's got to do something. Somebody's got to stand up and say, no, no, it's not going to happen. You say, well, uh, why, are you, why are you giving us all this stuff? Well, that's what we need to know. That's what we need to know. You've heard the word. You've flooded with the word. You've got the word coming out of your ears. You, you watch God TV, you, watch, you listen to CDs, you, watch, you do all that, you listen to podcasts, but still, your life hasn't changed. Oh, sorry, forgive, forgive, forgive. Still, your life hasn't changed because all you're doing is listening to the Word and you're not doing nothing. We've got to be doing something. 
unless we become doers of the word and not hearers only, we what? Deceive ourselves. Some of you might not come back in the morning. Some of you might not even stay for, past, for Pastor Robbie. But, but I'm telling you, we, have, we, we, we are men and we've got to be real men in these days. We've got to stand up for that which is right. Listen, uh, uh, there is so much uh, stuff happening in, uh, in the world that we need knowledge in every area so that we can handle those. I was listening to Russell Evans, who started Planet Shakers and has one of the fastest growing churches in Australia. His, his father uh, came to the age of 65 and decided to, to leave his ministry behind to his son, but he wasn't going to retire. He started in politics and started a political party in, the, in the, the, the state that they're in and got, and got into parliament and is changing things from parliament. Amen. Amen. You, you do something. He, he, did, he did something with the knowledge and the, the amount of people that he knew and they elected him into that position so that, you see, significance is what it's all about, guys. It's the legacy you leave. You know, uh, my, my spiritual father used to say, Pastor Bernie says, one day when they're all standing around uh, licking chicken from their fingers at my, at, my, at my funeral meal, they'll be saying to themselves, well, I wonder who's next. That's about how long they'll remember you. No, you've got to do something that makes a significant mark on c your community on, you, on your nation. Amen. You, you, somebody's got to stand up. The reason Hitler had did what he did, he had such a chip in his shoulder, sh so, shoulder so, because he could not get into an Italian school of art. He wanted to be an artist and an architect. And he thought, that there was Jews on the selection committee and that's why he never got in and that was one of the reasons he had such a hatred against the Jews. Are you with me? So we need to be looking at building uh, and fighting, building ourselves into men that will be restorers, that we will restore the values that are, we're, we're, we're celebrating now the, the centenary of the, the First World War. I can tell you, those guys fought for the morals of this nation. They, they fought for the rights of this nation. They fought so people could be free and, and, and not in bondage to whatever comes down the street. Are you with me? The Bible says in, in Joshua 1, 7, it says that God said to him, only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to do. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. God wants his people to inherit the land and we can prosper wherever we go if we meditate on God's word day and night. Listen, guys, it's not going to happen while we watch uh, the telly all night. It's not going to happen if we are uh, watching sports all the time or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's good to have uh, an interest in sports. It's good to... Uh, be a, have an interest in keeping fit and doing all that, but it's also good to uh, segmentalize your life so that you've got everything in its pri priorities and everything in its place. Do you get it right? You've got to spend time with your wife, time with your family. You, you see, if you don't spend time with your family because uh, the world has got such a grip on you that you cannot leave your job or do whatever because you wouldn't have enough money to pay off your debt. Uh, do you get that? You won't have enough money to pay off your debt that you shouldn't be in in the first place. 
then you, it, it just is a never-ending cycle. Are you with me? So we, we, we have to segmentalize our life and decide and, and pr do proper planning for things so that we get things in the right order. I'm, 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 I'm saying something to you tonight. I'm saying so. I'm talking. Uh, I'm not just flapping my gums here. I'm saying something that, 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 that you need to know. Because if you don't know it, you're going to be run over. You're going to be... Uh, my, my spiritual father uh, that, that used to say there's two kinds of people uh, in, uh, in the world. There's those that know what's happening and those that say, what happened? <laughs> you see? Uh, so it's like, where are you? Do you know what's happening? Or you say, what's happened? And you see, the, you, you, we, we got to know what's happening, amen? And we, we got, like the sons of Issachar, they knew the signs of the times. They knew the, the seasons of life. They were aware of the seasons of life, and they applied themselves in the, the, the right seasons, and they told others, this is the season that's coming. There's a, there's a season that's coming, and, and it's getting stronger against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a, and it's coming, uh, and it's, it's not North Korea we're talking about here. We're talking about North Ayrshire. We're talking about Edinburgh. We're talking about Aberdeen. We're talking about Scotland. We're talking about England. We're talking about Wales. You see, secular humanists are in the government. You see? You don't see. Amen. Nod your head for yes, shake it for no. It's like, yeah, well, God, we get that, Pastor. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's preaching, Pastor. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to be strong, wise men. That's the first thing that we've got to do. We've got to have skillful, godly wisdom. Skillful, godly wisdom. It's the first, it's wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Wisdom stands at the crossroads of the street shouting, come here, come here. And those that have ears to hear will go and they will be filled with wisdom. I, I always tell people that uh, you should read a proverb a day. You should not just read a proverb a day. You should study a proverb a day. You should cogitate, meditate on a proverb a day. That's where you get wisdom. Wisdom comes from proverbs. Amen? Amen. So read those proverbs. Get that wisdom. And then the next thing we need to do, we, 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 with that wisdom, we need to understand that we are stronger than a strong man. How do you become Stronger than a strong man. Well, it, 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 you become stronger by declaring who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you. I, I, I don't know another way. Look, I could, I could give you uh, five push-ups right now. No problem. I probably wouldn't. I maybe not even breathe hard after five push-ups. But I'm not going to do it, okay? But I don't want to show off here. You understand that some of you some of you might some of you might feel intimidated. So therefore my job's not to intimidate but to motivate. You understand? So I could get Chris or or, or someone to come up and do it or maybe yeah Roy looks as though he could do five. Um, Alec, I don't know about Alec. So We've got guys here that can do that. But you see, it's not strong physically. It's, it's strong, in the, strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And we've got to strengthen ourselves in the inner man. We've got to have uh, intestinal fortitude is what it's called. Uh, the, another word for it is guts. We've got to have guts. We've got to not to be intimidated by every bureaucratic uh, piece of nonsense that comes down the street. They, say, they said uh, if, if Scotland 
uh, doesn't get independence, it would have to repeal 389 laws or something. You know, uh, because when you move away from the, the laws of the Bible, the, which most of the countries use as their law, uh, their guidance for the law, then you move into having to make laws to control people and then another law to do something else. It's like taking pills that you have to take another pill to fight against the, the pill that you're taking and that sort of thing. It's just never ending. So uh, we need to be strong in the Lord and a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. Amen. So, uh, the next step is we need to train up our children in the way that they should go. Uh, and, and we have to motivate our children. It's, it's like a midwife uh, stimulates the palate of a newborn child uh, to get the, the, the child's uh, to take nourishment. We need to motivate the palate of our children so that our children want to know the Lord. They want to uh, know what the goodness of God and what God has done for them. Are you with me? Uh, that you see, Deuteronomy 6, 1 says, now this is the instruction, the laws and the precepts which the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you might do them in the land to which you go to possess it. So we must teach our young men and women to possess, to become possessors of the land. Amen. Amen. We've got to move into the land and possess that land. You say, well, how do I do that? You, you walk about and you say, every place in, in which my foot shall tread, the Lord has given it to me. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. Uh, and, and you can do that uh, physically and believe physically that that will be yours as well. But you, you, you go forward uh, create, creating a place uh, and creating the atmosphere and the environment that you live in by the, the, the words of your mouth. And you possess it. You possess it. You say, this is my land. This is, and, and Psalm 2.8, God says he would give us the heathen of the land is our inheritance. We've got to possess the land. We've got to possess, and we've got to stop the enemy stealing that which belongs to us. Amen. Amen. The, the word goes on and says in verse 2 that you may reverently fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, and keep all his statutes and his commandments which I commanded you all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be watchful, verse 3, <coughs> to do them that it may be well with you and that you may increase exceedingly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Now you see, we got to move into what God has shown us to take. So we got to start doing some things positively in the spirit. Amen? So we're training up our child our children so that we will have generations after us so that the, 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 the word of God will continue. You know, we're only one generation away from the gospel uh, ceasing and not existing anymore. And God says this in John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. So when we ask God in the name of Jesus, he will do it for us. Amen. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm going to uh, start with this, and it's, it's uh, really just a continuation of step two, but Isaiah 35, 3, it says, Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful-hearted, Be strong. Do not fear. Fear, behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, he will come and he will save you. Amen. So I'm saying to you tonight, be strong. Do not fear what man can do to you. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. 
He will come and he will make sure that this land is cleansed. He will come and he will show up the idiosyncrasies of the... uh, the, I nearly said idiots, but I shouldn't have said that, that believe in secular humanism or relativism or any of the other isms that's around. He will show them the futility of, of those things and God will raise up a people that are strong and very courageous, people that do not fear, people that are, 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 are able to stand and say, no, I'm not doing that. You know, when, when, when we look around the world, when we look in North Korea, for example, and we look in different countries of the world, Sudan and, and North Nigeria and different places, people are being imprisoned, People are being martyred on a daily basis. Thousands of people are being martyred on a daily basis for the gospel. When you think of Tiananmen Square, what do you think of? You think of a skinny little guy standing in front of a tank. One guy standing in front of a tank. Isn't that right? He was courageous. He didn't fear. He knew what was happening. And it's like, In Ukraine just now, people are saying, no, we'd rather die than be back under communist uh, rule of Russia. Isn't that right? People are, they're now having to fight a bloody battle where before they could have fought it without bloodshed. Are you with me? So we got to make up our minds. We are men that have made up minds. And, uh, We've got to make those minds up and, and, and take something from this tonight. Be motivated to do those things that you are well equipped to do. God has put everything into your heart, everything that you need. He says he's given you all things that, per, that pertain to life and godliness. He's given you everything that you need to do what he says you can do.